Welcome to the Chic Assignment Check-In for May 2021. Hello everyone, Jennifer here and welcome back to The Daily Connoisseur. I hope you have been enjoying the chic assignment for May. We are going to get into all of the details about the artists we've selected this month. But first, the chic assignment is brought to us by The Chic Society, which is the private membership group here on YouTube. I do one vodcast every Friday and I go live or do a live Zoom call once a month. They are such a wonderful group of ladies and gentlemen in The Chic Society. It's only $1.99 cents a month to join. So you can click on the join button down below or I will have a link in the description box if you're interested in checking it out. There's also two upper tiers that you can join if you'd like to support the channel on a higher level. One of the upper tiers, the Chic Connoisseurs, you're seeing their name scrolling in the ticker down below. Also at the end of the video, I'm going to be sharing the Elegant Connoisseurs with you, another one of the upper tiers, and I'm going to be mentioning their businesses and their names. So I do hope that you stay until the very end of the video. Another quick announcement before we begin, Connoisseur Kids is now available in Poland. So it has been translated by my wonderful public who also published the Madame Chic books there. So I wanted to let you know because I know we have a lot of Polish viewers on the blog. So if you have children or you know someone who does, this would make an excellent book for you or your friends. So Connoisseur Kids is now available in Poland. All right, this month we studied Dvorak. He is a Czech composer and we listened to that wonderful piece from Yo-Yo Ma and Itzhak Perlman, Humoresque number seven in G-flat major, opus 101. This piece was so vibrant. I listened to it so many times this month and I saw all of you who left comments in their video. So let's learn more about Dvorak. I'm going to share 10 interesting facts you may not know about him. And this is coming from the Parker Symphony Orchestra. Okay, interesting fact number one, he apprenticed as a butcher. Dvorak was the oldest of 14 children, eight who survived infancy. His father was a zither player, an innkeeper, and also a butcher. A young Antonin not only joined his father in the local band, but also in his business as an apprentice butcher. At the age of 13, he was inducted into the Butcher's Guild. Interesting fact number two, his grandmother had a pet name for him. Dvorak's grandmother called him My Little Toothy because he apparently had good teeth. Number three, his first compositions went unnoticed. Dvorak's first compositions received no critical reception and no public performance. In fact, it wasn't until Johannes Brahms's efforts to boost his career that any of his music began to attract interest. It is said that Dvorak was so critical of himself that he burned his early works. This is where it all crosses together, which is so nice because we learned about Brahms through Clara Schumann last month, and now he also helped Dvorak. So I love hearing about these collaborations among these famous composers and he burned his early works which is a complete tragedy I want to tell every artist sorry I'm breaking away here as always every artist I don't care what you do write compose you're going to experience rejection you're going to experience people who don't appreciate your work don't give up don't destroy the work that doesn't mean that it's not valid oh, okay just had to say that Interesting fact number four, sheet music for the first Slavonic dances sold out. In 1874, Brahms sat on a jury to award financial support to talented composers in need. It is then that he encountered Dvorak and was visibly overcome by his mastery and talent. Brahms recommended that his publisher, Simrock, publish a set of Slavonic dances for piano duet. The sheet music for the eight dances sold out in one day. Interesting fact number five, Dvorak loved trains. The composer was known to spend hours at the Franz Josef railway station in Prague watching trains. He knew the timetable by heart and even asked his students to describe train journeys they had made. Later, when he visited America, he also took up pigeon raising and watching steamboats. Rather interesting hobbies. Number six, he stole pencils. In an effort to help calm Czech speakers in Austria who were upset over the banning of their language, Dvorak was appointed a member of the Austrian Senate. He came the first day in 1901, accepted the honor, stole all of the pencils at his desk because they were perfect for composing, and never showed up again. Number seven, he was an early riser. Dvorak and his wife got up very early in the morning. When they stayed in Cambridge with composer and organist Charles Villiers Stanford, the host was surprised to find the couple sitting under a tree in the garden at 6 a.m. Number eight, a ship is named for Dvorak. 
1943, an American Liberty ship in the U.S. Navy was named the USNS Antonin Dvorak in the composer's honor. Number nine, there is a mural of his honor in Iowa. Dvorak spent a few weeks living in Spillville, Iowa. It was a town of mostly Czech-speaking immigrants at the time. It is there that he wrote his American String Quartet. Today, a mural is there in his honor. And number 10, he is the second Czech composer to receive worldwide recognition. Dvorak is not the only Czech composer of note. Bedrick Smetana, and I probably just completely said that wrong, first established a nationalist example during the 1848 Prague uprising. So those are 10 interesting facts about Dvorak. He sounds like a very interesting man. I love that he had other hobbies other than composing. It's so important for us to have other things that we're interested in, uh, in addition to our first passion. So I hope that you enjoyed learning more about Czech composer Antonin Dvorak this month. Okay, things are warming up and we are going to dive into William Wordsworth. I'm going to read a very brief biography to you from biography.com. And the poem I'm going to read afterward is She Was a Phantom of Delight. Watani Watani recommended this and I do read all of your comments and I love your comments and recommendations. So I want you to know that. And she recommended that we would read this one next and it's perfect. So I'm going to read that after we learn more about William Wordsworth. Poet William Wordsworth was born on April 7, 1770 in Cockermouth, Cumberland, England. Wordsworth's mother died when he was seven and he was an orphan at 13. Despite these losses, he did well at Hawkshead Grammar School where he wrote his first poetry and went on to study at Cambridge University. He did not excel there, but managed to graduate in 1791. Wordsworth had visited France in 1790 in the midst of the French Revolution and was a supporter of the new government's Republican ideals. On a return trip to France the next year, he fell in love with Annette Vallon, who became pregnant. However, the declaration of war between England and France in 1793 separated the two. Left adrift and without income in England, Wordsworth was influenced by radicals such as William Godwin. In 1795, Wordsworth received an inheritance that allowed him to live with his sister, Dorothy. That same year, Wordsworth met Samuel Taylor Coleridge. The two became friends and together worked on Lyrical Ballads, 1798. The volume contained poems such as Coleridge's Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner and Wordsworth's Tintern Abbey and helped Romanticism take hold in English poetry. The same year that Lyrical Ballads was published, Wordsworth began writing The Prelude, an epic autobiographical poem that he would revise throughout his life. It was published posthumously in 1850. While working on the prelude, Wordsworth produced other poetry such as Lucy. He also wrote a preface for the second edition of Lyrical Ballads. It described his poetry as being inspired by powerful emotions and would come to be seen as a declaration of romantic principles. In 1802, a temporary lull in fighting between England and France meant that Wordsworth was able to see Vallon and their daughter Caroline. After returning to England, he wed Mary Hutchinson, so he wasn't married to Vallon who gave birth to the first of their five children in 1803. Wordsworth was also still writing poetry, including the famous I Wandered Lonely as a Cloud and Ode, Intimations of Immortality. These pieces were published in another Wordsworth collection, Poems, in two volumes in 1807. As he grew older, Wordsworth began to reject radicalism. In 1813, he was named as a distributor of stamps and moved his family to a new home in the Lake District. By 1818, Wordsworth was an ardent supporter of the conservative Tories. Though Wordsworth continued to produce poetry, including a moving work that mourned the deaths of two of his children in 1812, he had reached a zenith of creativity between 1798 and 1808. It was this early work that cemented his reputation as an acclaimed literary figure. In 1843, Wordsworth became English's Poet Laureate, a position he held for the rest of his life. At the age of 80, he died on April 23, 1850 at his home in Rydal Mount, Westmoreland, England. And that is the story of William Wordsworth. So we are going to be reading She Was a Phantom of Delight. She was a phantom of delight when first she gleamed upon my sight, a lovely apparition sent to be a moment's ornament. Her eyes as stars of twilight fair, like twilight's too, her dusky hair, but all things else about her drawn from Maytime and the cheerful dawn, a dancing shape, an image gay, to haunt, to startle and waylay. I saw her upon nearer view, a spirit, yet a woman too. 
her household motions light and free, and steps of virgin liberty, a countenance in which did meet sweet records, promises as sweet, a creature not too bright or good for human nature's daily food, for transient sorrows, simple wiles, praise, blame, love, kisses, tears, and smiles. And now I see with eye serene the very pulse of the machine, a being breathing thoughtful breath, a traveler between life and death. The reason firm, the tempered will, endurance, foresight, strength, and skill. A perfect woman, nobly planned, to warn, to comfort, and command. And yet, a spirit still and bright, with something of angelic light. So it was said that he wrote this poem about his wife before they got married, and the comparison to her being a phantom or an apparition is actually a positive one. He's saying that she haunts him, he can't stop thinking about her. Uh, and that was the analysis that I read when I was studying this poem. So I truly hope that you enjoyed studying William Wordsworth this month. Please let us know what your favorite Wordsworth poem is in the comments down below. Chic assignment number three was to fine tune your morning routine. And I shared a morning routine video with you this month. If you haven't already seen it, I will put it in the I cards up above. There's also a playlist there where you could see lots of other morning routines from other YouTubers just like myself. So I hope that that gives you inspiration to fine tune your morning routine. Of course, I didn't show absolutely everything in my morning routine, so I did have a lot of questions about various things, but I hope that it gives you the gist of my morning, which is to accomplish my work, do the things that are meaningful to me. Looking presentable is always very important to me, and that's something that I try to take care of in the morning hours. So I'd love to know how your morning routine has been fine-tuned this month. And finally, we are working on our posture. And just as I said that, I was trying to lift up my shoulders. So I interviewed etiquette expert Micah Meyer this month, and I will leave our interview in the iCards up above as well. And we talked about modern etiquette as well as deportment. And posture is so important. When you are stressed, the first two things that you should think about are your breathing and your posture. How are they? And when you correct those, you do feel better. So it's good for us to have good posture as elegant men and women. All right, now we are going to look at the elegant connoisseurs. They are one of the top tiers in the Chic Society, and I would love for you to give them your full attention as they are high patrons of the channel. Amanda Dykes, author of award-winning fiction, written to light the dark and lift your heart. Amy Floor from Azalea Spa Goods, handcrafted aromatherapy body oils. Brandy Still, silhouette artist, keeping alive the art of silhouette portraiture that dates back from 1700s France. Jenny Williams from Carrot Top Paper Shop, offering colorful literary wall art and book-themed gifts to inspire every woman to be the heroine of her life. Elaine Brisebois is a certified nutritionist and women's weight loss coach. Download her elegant eating handbook, simple and effective strategies for permanently living at your natural weight to get started. Ashley Buffa from Freedom Moms, Learning to treat chores as a family team is the key to creating and maintaining a tidy, organized home, and it's attainable through the Freedom Moms Smart Kid Chore System. Inspired by Nikki, YouTube channel, and Etsy shop, Nikki creates beautiful aprons, stationery, and so much more. Julie Coleman from My Confident Closet. Julie helps you build a seasonal wardrobe that fits your style and budget. Katie Rose, artist. Her collection, Good Tidings, is inspired by landscapes around our globe in this time of strengthening through struggle. Her original paintings can be found at katierosecollection.com. Lindy Sellers, Diary of Domesticity YouTube channel. Traditional homemaking for the modern woman. Nicole Brignol, founder of Lovely Bits, organic intimate care for women. Rosenda Valenzuela from Little Pink Casa YouTube channel, inspiring ladies in vintage homemaking, elegant lifestyle, feminine wardrobe, and romantic home. Mrs. Shockley from A Home for Elegance Dress Boutique. Visit her online at ahomeforelegance.com. Sarah Morgan Wellness. Sarah is a wellness coach for women specializing in helping busy women, especially moms, find manageable ways to meet their own health and wellness needs without the guilt. Learn more at sarahmorganwellness.com. Tina Hugal from OutSchool. Tina teaches history through biographies for ages 8 to 16. 
Michelle Rohr from the Secret Owl Society, digital planners and e-courses on how to create passive income from your own planning business. Learn more at secretowlsociety.org. Allen's Scottish Shortbread uses their Scottish grandmother's heirloom family recipe to bake small batches of buttery shortbread that pairs perfectly with a pot of tea. Learn more at allenscottishshortbread.com. Stern Brothers Jewelry is a family-owned, custom-designed jewelry store specializing in making heirloom jewelry into something special for the next generation generation to cherish. Something to cherish, beautiful and meaningful products that promote the celebration and gift of life based off of the watercolor designs of artist Cherish Flyter. V-Cell Victoria, your Jaffra Beauty Consultant, featuring beautiful products such as Royal Jelly Skincare Rituals, Royal Almond Body Oils and Lotions, as well as Sumptuous Color. Special offers every month. And thank you to the following, Catherine Ray, Carly Tom from Living in Loveliness, Carolyn Haydu, Guy Blaze, Jen Carlson, Jet Rally Heron, Gina K. Kenry, Jenny Candelaria, Linda Eckloff, Marie Caudill, Maria Condor, Melissa M., and Prudently at Home. Thank you so much to the Elegant Connoisseurs and all of the Chic Society for bringing us the Chic Assignment. I hope you enjoyed the assignment this month. Tag me on social media with the hashtag the Chic Assignment. Invite a friend who you know would love to add more art and culture to his or her life. Thank you so much everyone. Keep calm and remain classy and I will see you in my next video. Mm -hmm.